Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker. And today I'm going to be explaining to you guys how to make my third loop round half double crochet dishcloth. That's what it looks like from the front and from the back. This is in an effort to spread word about Rose over at Rose Likes Crochets, Wishes for Wings program that she's been doing now. This is her second year. In October, they are asking for a donation of dishcloths. So, this is my first participation video in doing a tutorial. I've already shared this once in the show and tell where she sent me a ball of cotton to make a dishcloth to donate. Uh, I will be circling back with another dishcloth pattern in August as well. That one will be a little bit simpler than today's, but don't worry. A third loop half double crochet is not a difficult stitch. It's just a half double crochet. It's all about where you place it. And by the time you finish one of these dishcloths, you'll be doing half or a third loop half double crochets everywhere you can possibly put one of these stitches in. This is the finished one that I have sitting here. I do not have a border edge on this one, but I will tell you at the end of the tutorial and show you how to do one of my favorite edges for this dishcloth. The dishcloth we'll be making today will be using Premier Home Cotton in yellow. I wanted to make sure we had something very bright that you could see. What's oh, sunflower, sorry, sunflower. And we will also be using a size H hook. And you will need a split ring or removable, like the lever back, stitch markers. I'll be back in just a moment to show you how to do the third loop half double crochet. And then how, I'll come back again to show you how to get your dishcloth started. Okay, you guys, so before we get started, I do want to say that in order to follow along with this tutorial, you will need to know how to do a half double crochet and how to do a single crochet as well as chain or do magic loop to create a circle to work within. Like I said, this is a fairly simple pattern. The stitch is just a little bit different orientation compared to how we're used to doing a half double crochet. So. To get us started on how to do the third loop half double crochet, I have already started with a little swatch here. This is just some chunky light green yarn, so it make it a little bit easier for you to see on camera. I have done 10 half double crochets into a ring. I have not joined yet into a circle. I'm not going to do a slip stitch into this first stitch. What I'm going to do is do a do two half double crochets into the third loop. So when you're looking at your stitch, you've got this front loop, you've got this back loop here. And then when you turn your stitch over, you have a bar directly behind it, and that is your third loop. That's the loop we will be working our stitches into. So, you, you, what's going to happen is as we work, what looks like these chains that are here on top, the top of these stitches, will be turned towards the front of the work. And that's what gives us this texture here on this dishcloth. This is also a great stitch to have in your arsenal for when you want to do brims on hats that have a little bit of structure to them, but also a little bit of give. Kind of gives you a false ribbing, and it's kind of like mock knitting. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do a half double crochet. So we're gonna yarn over. This is our first stitch right here. So we've got front loop, back loop. We're gonna turn those to the front, and we've got our Sorry, I'm doing this over a camera, so it is kind of hard for me to see what I'm doing. All right, front loop, back loop, 
flip it over, and this is our third loop. Yarn over, yarn over, and pull through three stitches. So you can already see where that stitch has now been turned to the front of our work. In order to keep in a circular pattern, we will have to increase in every stitch as this is row two of a pattern. I am going to go ahead and place my stitch marker here. Even though I'm not going to show you how to make the dishcloth quite yet, I just want you to have a handle on this stitch before we go. So front loop, back loop, lean it forwards, and you've got your third loop right there. So yarn over, insert into our loop, into our first half double crochet, yarn over and go to our second stitch. And you can already see where we've turned now two of these stitches to the front of the work. And this is what we have from the back. So when you're looking at this from the back, if you still can't quite identify where your third loop is, go come back up to the edge where we've got our front loop, our back loop. Coming to the back of the work, we have our third loop right there. It's in between the knots that are made with each stitch. So front, back, third loop right there. So once again, from the front of our work, go ahead and yarn over for our half double. And you can see it's already starting to already turn our front and back loops our beautiful top little V stitches here to the front of the work, which actually makes this very easy to continue doing the back loop half double crochet or third loop half double crochet. So we've got our front loop, our back loop, and then we're going into our third loop back here. Yarn over, yarn over and pull through all three stitches. And now we have three of our stitches turned towards the front. So we've got our front loop running right here, our back loop just on top of it, and when we tilt that back, we have a bar right here, and that is our back loop that we're going to be working through. There are many patterns that use the third loop so you can create dimensions and projects, things like the Sophie's Universe blanket, the Mandala Madness blanket. They use that loop a lot. So you can have three different layers working into the third loop, the back loop, and the front loop of texture being created over things. And now you have this, it's a, it creates a recess section here with our chain stitches or what looks like chain stitches running along the, crop, the top. So once again, skip the front loop, skip our back loop, go into the third loop. And because we've already established that that's what we're working into, the work automatically starts to turn on itself to present that third loop back here to us. So after the first set of stitches you do, it becomes significantly easier to locate that third loop as you continue working. So we've got front loop, back loop, push those down, and that third loop is right there, just begging to have a stitch put into it.
Now, as I always recommend, when you're trying out a new stitch and you're unfamiliar with it, unsure if you're going to get it right, I always recommend making a dishcloth just to test out a new stitch. I find it's one of the best ways to test things out. Cotton, while it is fidgety to work with, gives you a decent stitch definition. Gen most of them, most of them, will allow you to see what you're doing as you're making new stitches. And if you don't have it perfect your first time around, it's a small project, you'll be completing a project, and your dishes really don't care if your dishcloth is perfect or not. So this is one of those perfect opportunities to learn a new stitch and create a finished product while learning that new stitch. And if you have some messes up, so that's, that's fine. Your countertops don't care when you're scrubbing them. Your dishes don't care when you're scrubbing, scrubbing them. I actually really like this one for body cloths. It gives you a, a mild exfoliation in the texture. It's great for doing dishes, and it's wonderful for doing countertops, toilets, things like cleaning your bathrooms. It's a great all-purpose texture. Now, I would color coordinate, you know, blue is for the bathroom, Red is for the body kind of thing, but uh, if you decide to make a whole bunch to use across your house. But to me, this is this and the lemon peel stitch, both are the perfect amount of texture in a cloth to give exfoliation and scrubbing power. So I'll be back in just a moment and we will start the actual washcloth. Okay, you guys, first off, we're going to start our dishcloth with a center loop to work into. So I do prefer a chain three slip stitch circle. So that's just chaining three and I slip into the back bump and draw through the loops. I do like to put my finger in there because there is a strand in between the stitches that you can accidentally crochet into wrong, but that's just, that's me. If you like the magic loop method, more than free to use the magic loop method. So because I'm starting from a flat circle, I am gonna do a chain one just to get me a little bit more height to match the height of our half double crochets. And I'm gonna crochet over my tail and do 10 half double crochets into our circle. One, two, three, four, There is no magic number, but for me, I just prefer 10 stitches in a round dishcloth for some reason. It's just a personal thing. Six. Seven. Oh, I'm hung. I'm gonna go seven. Eight. Nine. And 10. So now I'm gonna let my tail fall to the back. When we go, to, when I go to finish that off, I will tighten the center stitches down before I weave in my end around that center circle. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, did I only do nine stitches? One, pull this back to where I can see it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I've got ten. And this, guys, is why I normally don't do a whole bunch of tutorials. <laughs> All right. So, row one is complete. We have ten half double crochets into our circle. Next off, 
we're going to start building row two. So we're going to do our third loop half double crochet. So front loop, back loop, turn it, oops, and slide under our third loop here. Doing this around my camera is definitely a little more fidgety than I'm used to. Alright, in that first half double crochet, we are going to put a stitch marker there to mark the beginning of our round. And we're going to put two third loop half double crochets into every stitch so we will end round two with 20 stitches. So front loop, back loop, third loop. And we're going to do two stitches into that round. Front loop, back loop, third loop. Front loop, back loop. Third loop. Okay, I'll come back and rejoin you guys as soon as we have 20 stitches around. Okay, you guys, so we are up to 20 stitches now in row two, and you will see we have come back to where our split ring marker is. So we are going to yarn over, go into our third loop, which is really obvious with that stitch marker there. And we are gonna do one half double crochet into the third loop of stitch one. We're gonna pause, move our marker up a row, and continue on in the pattern. We've got one stitch in the first. We're going to go two in the second. One, two. Okay, so now each section, as we increase out, is going to have three stitches. So we're gonna go, the pattern is now one, and then in the next one, we're going to put two. So now we'll have 30 stitches at the end of this row, or round. Now we've already fully established our spiral here, and you're just going to continue working in a spiral pattern starting your new increasing pattern every time you get back to your stitch marker. So this one is one stitch in the first stitch, two in the second, next row will be one in the first, one in the second, two in the third. And you're gonna continue increasing on the left side of each, I think of these as pie wedges in between the increases. And you have 10 wedges and right now we're at three stitches per invisible wedge here. In the finished project, you can faintly see where those wedges occur in the process of doing this. And you can see clearly we started our spiral here and just continue to work our way out. So that is all you need to know. Each time you get to your stitch marker, you're gonna do one stitch 
into the first however many stitches and then two to increase and that's going to occur into the second stitch of the previous rows increase so we're going to have one one two increasing us up to four this is a standard circular increase for crochet the math is just your standard increase there's nothing special about it we're just doing a slightly different stitch than what we would normally do and each row using a 10 stitch start like this it'll be 20 30 40 50 60 stitches per row and you're going to just continue that until you reach the size that you want your finished dishcloth to be frequently i work until for my tiny hands i have something that's just beyond my hand size especially if i'm giving this to somebody else but this is uh, in the case of the premier home cotton um, splash collection this is one ball with a little bit of extra with some of the others that are, have a little bit more yardage i do also manage to get a like a face scrubby size scrubby out of this so i'm going to continue working our yellow dish cloth out until we're to the point of putting on a border just increasing like i said one one stitch for every section every 10 sections as i go out so i will be back and we will talk about putting a border on okay you guys thanks to the magic of being able to pause my camera here we're back an hour and a half later and i have a dishcloth about the same size this is 11 rows for mine once again you can do yours bigger smaller whatever you're you're this is one of those this is more of a recipe than it is a exact size like i said for me i prefer you know just above my palm size for me but i've got fairly small hands so all right i've done 11 rows i don't need my stitch marker anymore here we are going to do a reverse single crochet or crab stitch depending on what you are used to calling this so i'm gonna chain one just so i've got some room to maneuver my hook working opposite we're going to work a single crochet Normally you'd go forward towards your hook side. Instead, we're going to dip into the stitch behind us and work a single crochet. Just straight in the top of the stitch like normal. No back loop, front loop, third loop, nothing. Just a single crochet. Now, I do like this border on things I'm going to be doing dishes with or anything I'm going to do any fine scrubbing with. I think this edge just gives you a little something to shove in a corner and kind of scrubby, scrubby, scrub with. It's got a nice rounded edge to it. It's a nice smooth finish I personally think and it is dimensional I mean it's a little cording like almost uh, if you're a knitter and have done an I-cord bind off on something this kind of does feel a little bit like an I-cord bind off but it's much much easier to accomplish obviously if you're left-handed this is I'm right-handed, so this is going to be a little reversey, reversey for you, but and you're just going to do this all the way across your dishcloth here. 
or body cloth or whatever you want to clean. And you're not going to do any increasing or anything. You're just going to work one stitch into every stitch working backwards. So when I get back to the beginning, I will pop back on here. Okie dokie guys. So I have now completed all my stitches. I've worked right up until where we started. Now, <laughs> holding my scissors completely backwards there. I'm going to pull our loop through. And when you weave in this end, come in through the top of this stitch to start it. And that way your final join there will just meet evenly across the top. So mine does look a little ruffled and it's just because I think I was holding my needle just a little bit or hook just a little bit tighter, but you can see clearly it'll lay out flat. <laughs> I just have it just a little, uh, a little overly tight right now, but that is all there is to making this dishcloth. Now, you know, obviously weave in your ends. I tighten up my hole because I did a chain three and you'll weave in that end. When you're completed, you're still going to have, in general, a substantial amount of yarn left. And like I said, I tend to have enough to make a face cloth, which I actually prefer for my dishes. I like the smaller ones because I just feel like I can get into the edges more. So I will use this to make a second smaller round scrubby, and I will definitely have the crab stitch or reverse single crochet border on that. And then generally I have a few yards left over. So before I signed off of here, I wanted to show you what I do with my little leftovers. So I have in my desk drawer, one of these at all times. This is just one of the fold over pot holders. And as we go, you can see all the ones I've done as probably since October maybe. October, November. And then this uh, black and green one is actually the yarn that Rose sent me. So this is my third dishcloth since I made that one. So very, very, very simple. But it's just a nice, nice way to use up your scraps. You get a double layer pot holder out of it. I like scrappy projects. To me, they're kind of fun just to have around. Uh, I did the last box I sent to Rose for wings. I did include the pot holders along with the dish claws and other items that I sent for wings. I don't know if uh, she's accepting those this time around or not. But like I said, October is when they are asking for the dish cloths. October is dishcloth month, so I will be sending a box in then. And this tutorial was to help support and promote Rose's Wishes for Wings program. You'll find all the information there on Rose's YouTube page, which I will have linked down below. Wings is an amazing organization that helps men, women, and children getting out of domestic violence situations. So as my ice maker starts making noise and making me jump out of my skin here. Um, they're a great organization. They seem to help quite a few people. I highly recommend checking out Rose's videos for more information on wings and what they're asking for each month because each month does have its own thing. But October is washcloths, and that's what I'm going to be helping to support here in the next couple months. In August, we will have another tutorial for my lemon peel dish cloth. Once again, it's another fairly simple, basic dish cloth. And also, like I said, dish cloths are an excellent way to learn a new stitch or a new technique. It's a small project. It has a finite size that you're looking for. It gives you an opportunity to test out the stitch with a yarn where you're going to have very good stitch definition. If you've seen any of my videos about 
how to knit as a crocheter or approach knitting as a crocheter, you will have heard me say, I think you really ought to make about 20 dish claws just in, in some variation of the knit stitch and purl stitch in order to get your hands around the stitches and really see what it is you're doing. And like I said, if you mess up, it's not a big deal. Your dishes don't care if your dishcloth looks perfect. You save the perfect one for gifts and you keep the imperfect ones for yourself. You still have a finished object at the end of the day that you can be proud of and get use out of instead of just working up a whole bunch of swatches that are just going to sit around in a bag somewhere and collect dust. Now, if you're somebody who's really good at, you know, putting on borders and sewing them together and turning them into a blanket, wonderful. But the truth is most of us don't have time for that. So I think dish claws are an excellent way to try a new stitch. I hope you enjoyed the third loop half double crochet spiral dish cloth. And I will see you guys real soon. As always, I love you guys. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you guys real soon.